we'd all teach money at school. I said, why not? And she couldn't answer me. And she got very flustered. She said, sit down, take your seat. And then I got curious. I said, why don't we learn about money? She says, go ask your father. He's, the, he's my boss. So my father was the head of education. But I came from a family with a poor attitude, if you know what I mean. Because rich, poor, middle class, poverty starts with a fundamental attitude. So when I was nine years old, I moved to this rich kid's school. And suddenly I realized I was poor because it's relative. You know, as Einstein, it's all relative. And these guys, their fathers owned the banks, they owned the plantations, they owned the car dealerships, they owned the meat packing company, they owned the ranches. And I'm going, how come my dad doesn't own that? I go home and ask him, I said, why don't we learn about money in school? And he looked at me and says, because the government doesn't let us teach that subject. The government tells us what we can teach and what we can't teach. And I thought that was strange. And I said, but aren't we going to school to learn about money? He says, no, your job is to get a job. I said, but you get a job to earn money. He goes, no, you're supposed to just get a job. I went, no, 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 no. Isn't the purpose of a job to earn money? He goes, you're correct. So my rich dad started teaching me about money on one condition. And that condition was he would never pay me. He says, the moment I pay you, you think like an employee. He says, that's the trap. Entrepreneurs work for free. And now I'm nine years old, my head's going cracking in half. He says, you never want a paycheck. You understand that, kid? I said, okay, I got it. And he says, well, how do I make money? He says, that's what entrepreneurs figure out. <laughs> it's like, we're playing Monopoly. He says, what do you think we're doing? So I don't know. I'm teaching you about money. And then that's why, you know, you have one green house. You know, he says, there's many formulas for great success in money. There's thousands of them. But one of the best ones is found on the game of Monopoly. It still is today. Four green houses, one red hotel. Mm -hmm. I said, what? He says, one of the greatest ways to acquire great wealth is playing Monopoly in real life. Four greenhouses, one red hotel. But is that all there is? He goes, that's it. And he says, what do you think I'm doing? And I went, I don't know. So then he took me out and he showed me his greenhouses. And 10 years later, when I was 19, I was now in school in New York, and I come back to Hawaii and Rich Dad had bought the biggest piece of land smack dab in the middle of Waikiki Beach. And when you go to Waikiki Beach today, you'll see the Hyatt Regency Hotel. That was his hotel. Just like the game of Monopoly. Just like the game of Monopoly. Acquired assets and they became bigger assets. He just kept a, 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 what's called an assemblage because that property wasn't that big at that time. So he had to buy out all the small guys because Waikiki was a little dirt water little town. So he'd buy out this shop owner and buy that shop owner. And it took him a while, but he finally assembled this large piece of property. And then he, then he and Hyatt put up this giant hotel. Mm. You know, it I just, And it just sold for $800 million. So that's how I learned about money. <laughs> and that, uh, I don't need a job. I don't have a retirement. I don't need a retirement. I don't want the government to take care of me but I felt a social responsibility to teach. Mm -hmm. And that's what my rich dad did for me. You see, most teachers in school, they're out of ethics. They teach subjects they, don't, they themselves don't practice. You know, I had the same problem in my MBA program. I got into arguments with the marketing teacher because the guy didn't have a business. And then I got into arguments with the uh, accounting teacher because the accounting teacher didn't know accounting. I knew more about accounting than him because I actually worked in bookkeeping in my rich dad's companies. And so I'm not an accountant, but I understand accounting. So that was the end of my school years because I understood what a fake teacher is. A fake teacher is somebody who just wants a job and they'll teach anything. And a fake teacher is somebody who doesn't do what they teach. And a real teacher is doing what they teach every day. So my accountants, my attorneys, they're in it every single day. And that's how I learn, because every day I'm solving problems in my business. They're, they're, 
the book is, their book is called Coddling of the American Mind, is how they're making, how our school systems are making our students weaker. So in school, they have these things called now trigger effects. So you can't, as a teacher, you can't say anything that might upset the student. They don't want anything that might jar their point of view. So if I went into school, I'd be thrown out because I threaten them. My success comes from spirituality, not finance. The poor will always be amongst us because it starts up here. Right, it's that fear mentality. It's, it's in their words, you know, and the words become flesh. Again, I'm not really religious. I flunked out of Sunday school also. But when they say I can't afford it or I can't do that, they go down. They become what they say. And I meet so many people, I don't, I can't afford it, you think I made of money? Your mom used time. to say that, your mom used to say that. My dad, your dad. my PhD dad, he says, what do you think I am, made of money? I can't afford that. And my rich dad would say, that's why he's poor. Poor people say, I can't afford it, I can't do that, I don't have time. Because this is an escape. It's an escape, you know what I mean? It's easy to say, I can't afford it. Oh, I'm too tired. Oh, I can't go to the gym. Right. And your rich dad used to say what instead of, I can't afford it? How can I afford it? How can I do that? You know, what would it take? Or why should I do that? He says, that a question opens a mind, a statement closes the mind. See, when you say, I can't afford it, your mind shuts down and you become what you say. Yeah. You know, people say, well, money is not that important to me. Then. If money is not that important to you, money is not important to you. I mean, the, you know what I mean? I don't care about money. The money doesn't care about you. You know, it, the word does become flesh. Or I'll never be rich. Or the favorite one is the rich are greedy. It's the poor that are greedy. You know, if you think about it, because to be rich, you have to give something. You know, you have to, I, I have to produce books and games and I, I purchase real estate, I provide housing provide jobs and all that. That's why I'm rich. But greedy people produce nothing. Oh, no, it's the rich that are greedy. And I'm going, hey, sports fans, you know, you point a finger forward, three are pointing backwards. Mm. And so, as we know, there's a big attitude problem against the rich today. Poor people are selfish. Hit a lot of people below the belt. And he said, no, think about it. These these people are selfish. They're always complaining about their problems. They're always focused yeah. on their own yeah. issues. Yeah. Do you agree with that? Well, the way you get rich, you solve other people's problems. <laughs> right, that's how you create value. Yeah. Right. Yeah, if you, know, if you could cure cancer today, you'd be a trillionaire. You'd be an instant trillionaire. No, nah, I'm just too busy to work on that. I think I'll play golf instead. Yeah. You know? I think my father was making about 20,000 a year. And when I graduated from school, from college, I was making 120000 a year, six times the amount he made. And I was 21 years old. And he goes, how'd you do that? I said, I didn't go to the same school you went to. And I come back, my father's still making 20000 a year. I'm making 120 k And he can't understand it because he's a poor man in mind and in soul. You know, he, he says, you, you've become like one of those rich guys. And I said, just because I have money. On yeah, Bruce Lipton on my Bruce show. Bruce Lipton. Yeah. He says poverty is passed on. It's taught in your families. And middle class is taught in families. And I was really, I was really happy that you know, he, he endorsed Rich Dad, Poor Dad on your program. Because he says, I was taught by a rich man. Mm-hmm. And so the people right now who are sitting at home, <clears throat> who are struggling financially or worried about money or unhappy, they may be making a lot of money, but unhappy with what they're doing. It was probably taught to you. You know, your super ego was taught, get a job, work hard, or you'll you'll never be rich, or the rich are evil, or whatever. And until you change your mindset, money won't help you, right? Correct. And we see that with people that win the lottery, people that make more money, they still have the same problem. Right. Because they have that poor man's soul. Correct. If you're poor, you'll always be poor. That's really hard for people to understand. Yeah, the money will disappear that fast. Just like most pro athletes, you know, they make millions of dollars and what, 65% are bankrupt five years later? It's because they come from poor families. Now you tell them that, they get very angry at you. It's not, it's the rich fault. You know, it's you guys ripped me off and government ripped me off. But unfortunately, what 
Mr. Lepton was saying, it's passed down genetically. That's the frightening thing. So what Mr. Lepton was saying, what Trump and I are saying, and you know what uh, Jim Records and Nomi Prince and all, we're saying we got to change what we teach our kids. Right. Try to change that, yeah. that soul, that DNA, and introduce a real different mindset. Yeah. Well, if they've got to teach them, you know, as Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge. Yeah, but you got to have the basic knowledge of taxes, debt, uh, financial statements, and all that. If you don't want to learn it, I can't help you. So my poor dad never wanted to learn what my rich dad was teaching me. Right.